You're listening to the Empowering Process Podcast with your host, Gail Kraft. Listen as she holds frank discussions around how your purpose, being present, and trusting your power impacts your life. Whether you're an entrepreneur, leader, or developing your vision, you'll find wisdom and insights you can utilize right now. Welcome your host, Gail Kraft. Hello, everybody. Gail Craft here again with the Empowering Process podcast. And with me today is a a recent friend. Her name is Samantha Theobald. And Samantha, and I call her Sam, so you'll have to listen to Sam. So Samantha really has an interesting occupation. She is a professional for damsel in distress. Now, this is going to be aired after a few of my shame series. And what I wanted to do is add one more flavor to that. And the flavor is life does have its opportunities to be not as safe as you would like it to be. I'm going to read a little poem or a little something for you. But Samantha's occupation is to give you the tools and the techniques for being at least a little bit safer and a little bit more in control. And we're going to talk about situations. Uh, So it's not a sales situation. It really is, this is life guys for men and women. And of course, I'm going to be talking about women because I can only talk about myself. I can only talk about my perspective. And I'm sure, in fact, I know I have some men who are going to be joining us on their perspective of things. But let me read a, a poem that was actually on Facebook today. And it was on Facebook a friend of mine posted this and it's a man. And I was so moved that he did this. And the poem goes like this. Every woman you know has taken a longer route, has doubled back on herself, has pretended to dawdle by a shop window, has held her keys in her hand, has made a fake phone call has rounded a corner and run. Every woman you know has walked home scared. Every woman you know. And I will add to that, I commented on his uh, Facebook page. There was a moment, and I've done this actually more than once, where I, I was threatened as far as road rage is concerned. Mm. This was in LA, typical thing in LA, right? And there was a truck, a huge truck that was following me, that was tailing me. And when I realized I held up my phone and no, I wasn't taking a picture, but he didn't know that. And I just followed him with my phone and his passenger hit him, pointed, and then they were gone. It was as simple as that. Right. And I was prepared to turn it on once I had a view of his license plate, if I had to, to actually turn it on. So, you know, and I've done that at least three times that I can, (laughs) right, (laughs) Um, in order to, to feel safe. Right. And so, Samantha, Thank you so much for joining me. Enough about me. Now we want to talk about you and what you do. Okay. Absolutely. So let's let's talk about, you know, you've got a whole bunch of tools and a whole bunch of techniques, but you and I have talked about self-defense. I've taken self-defense classes. What are some of the things that people typically have to look out for? These are not unusual situations that um, you know, you have been trained on, that you have been counseled on and you share with people. So share some of those with us, please. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks for having me today, Gail. Um, it's always a pleasure to, you know, talk to people um, about self-defense, empowerment, about, you know, being responsible for themselves and what they can do to avoid being a victim. So, um, and, you know, not, not unusual. Um, I'm, I'm just going to correct you. It's damsel in defense. Oh, They're defense. Ah. All right. Yes. So, yeah. Big, big difference from your typical damsel in distress because, and you know what, that's a mistake that everybody makes. I did that too the first time. And when I heard about, no, no, 
It's defense, not distress. What? Put your head on a swivel for sure. And for good reason. So, um, you know, learning about this, you know, and of course, as a woman, you know, I always, again, said, you know what, I should take self-defense, you know, not that I avoid going to cities or places that, you know, feel threatening or risky per se, but, you know, just that, you know, there are scary things out there. So you don't want that to be a part of your life. You want to be ready in case of an emergency, right? Absolutely. Um, so, you know, learning about that, I just was naturally drawn to it. And, you know, it's just a, an amazing way as a woman, as a mom to, you know, help my daughter, to help other women in my family and women I don't know, you know, to feel good, to again, avoid being a victim and nobody plans on this, right? Nobody plans on it. It's like, you know, people say, oh, I'm, I'm too old. Nobody's going to attack me. And, you know, I, I've heard it all. Oh, nobody's going to attack me. I'm always with my husband. It, these are just not valid excuses. You're trying to fool yourself into a false sense of security. And you know what? When bad things happen, bad things happen. It's, it's not like you can avoid it, but you can be prepared for it. And that's the biggest difference. Well, you know, you and I talked earlier uh, um, about being prepared, and I told you the story about one self-defense class that I took, and um, and you had to go through a, a routine, if you will, in order to be certified, mm -hmm. and one of the first lines of defense is to scream, run your ass off and scream, right, <laughs> because, because whoever does not want attention drawn that way. And of course, that was the first thing I went to do. And guess what, guys? The first thing that happens to me when I get that frightened is my throat closes and I cannot scream. Oh, yeah. Whoa. -ho -ho. <laughs> right. And I'm like trying and trying and I couldn't scream. So I had to defend myself. Yeah. yeah. Well, in any self-defense class and, and what I talk to people about when we do have an Empower Hour or a Warrior Workshop, which I mean, think about that. Just the name of it sounds awesome. You're like, I feel like Superwoman for crying out loud, right? So <laughs> yeah, this is the point. This is the point. You know, it starts with that mindset, you know, and think about it. You know, when you're in any type of um, not even a threatening situation, but, you know, a fearful situation, you know, you're in a car accident. There's a fire alarm goes off at your place of employment. There are four autonomic responses here. Freezing is one of them. And that's exactly what you did. You thought you could scream, but you couldn't. You know, your body goes into that fight or flight. Um, essentially, that's what it is, um, type of, of state. And you cannot freeze. You need to get your butt out of there for whatever reason. And, you know, it's a threat of some kind. So, you know, we'd never know what that's going to be. But again, if you train yourself to be ready to, you know, just like practicing anything for your craft, for your job, for whatever you want to do, you know, memorize it, your body will remember, but you've got to practice, you know? So I think people play that game with their kids all the time, you know, um, what if, or, you know, paying attention, it's as simple as that, you know, I spy something, this, it's all about recognizing, like you're going out to dinner with your kids, like, hey, what color was the waitress's shirt? What was the waitress's name? You know, how many windows are in the house? And could you escape if there was a fire? Right. Do you know where the doorways are? Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and that's in case of an emergency, uh, uh, in case of a fire. One of the things that um, I became aware of, quite young, thank goodness, is that as a woman, when you have that instinct to cross the street, you think, oh, don't be ridiculous. No, right? If you have an instinct for anything, you do not have to justify it. That is my, my lesson. And I want to share that. You do not ever have to justify yourself, especially if you're keeping yourself safe. If anyone says to you why, you just say, because I want to, period. 
period and cross the goddamn street. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's listening to your gut instinct. All right. And like, um, it with, with our, you know, say, um, I call it a hero's power hour, a superhero's power hour. And that's what I do with kids and their moms, you know, daycares, schools, things like that. But you feel like a superhero and superheroes listen to their gut. Uh, we call it a, a, um, a heart signal for the kids because it's like, whoa, you know, kids can't relate to a lot of these adults type of feelings and things like that. So again, no matter what age you are, you have that instinct. And so you don't have to justify it. Just listen, you know, animals, animals, and that's what we are basically, but as people, we have judgment and that again, as a woman, we have more judgment than men and <laughs> on a lot of levels. Let me just say it that way, <laughs> but you know, we're worried about what's somebody going to think about me. Am I going to hurt their feelings? You know, if some threat is coming up to you on the street saying, Hey, give me five bucks. You know what? I don't care if he's the nicest guy ever. You flip the bitch switch and you're like, get the fuck away from me and go the other way. Exactly. You're never going to see that guy again. It does not matter what they think of you, but you had an instinct, a gut feeling, a fear, whatever. And it doesn't matter. You know how many times, and we don't know this, can you legit say, I made that decision and it got me out of that situation. You know, think about 9-11. How many people missed the bus to work, did not go into the trade center, did not get on that airplane? You will never know right. what these decisions or seemingly unnecessary things that happen to you will actually change your life. Absolutely. No. Absolutely. No. I don't know why I took this, the elevator instead of the stairs, or I don't know why I, you know, asked my friend to join me or walk me from the, the curb to my car at the mall. I mean, I don't know, but I did. And that's all that matters. You that's know, all that matters, you know, one of the, cause I've taken more than one self-defense course and um, one, it was very, very interesting because they taught us the, like you were saying, the $5, you know, if someone is coming towards you and the exercise they had us do is the person behind me was supposed to be my child. Okay. Yep. And I'm protecting the child. Right. So, so you can't grab the child and run. I know. Right. And so what we had to do was literally as forcefully and is for me is is and i'm gonna have to flip a lot of these out in the, in the word <laughs> often, and and bitchfully right go, go right and the gentleman who was my attacker really would not go until i got my entire body into it until i like grew and became this monster <laughs> right to to protect my child and i had to actually put my mind in that my in, in that mindset mm. of you know pretending my children are like little and what is it that yeah. i would do right yeah and and again unless there's a, a an emotional problem most people who are coming after you don't want that kind of recognition they don't want people they don't want that noise they don't want people staring at them right Yep, exactly. Right. Exactly. Like, I don't care if you're the nicest person in the world, you know, exactly. If you walk down the street, you've got to look people in the eye. You know, if you have the uh, resting bitch face, the RBF, I mean, even better, right? Even better. Like, what's wrong with you? That's just my case. No, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> but you know what? It can actually help you in a lot of circumstances. No, I am super friendly and I love people, but when I am out and about, and especially by yourself, again, you know, uh, if, if you're in a crowd, you're, you're less likely again to be a victim because there's somebody else, whether it is, you know, uh, your mom, your sister, um, a guy, or, you know, your six foot tall son or nephew, right? You know, you look less like a victim. So somebody's not even going to see you, you know, and likewise, carrying any type of self-defense tool. And yes, keys in your fist, not a good idea, but if that's all you got, that's all you got, right? So, you know, part of what I do is to equip, empower, and educate 
And, you know, yeah, it's just like, well, I, I, I do that. Okay. Yeah. But what if you drop your keys, then what happens? What if they take them away from you? Okay, exactly. Oh, I don't have a car, a car key. I just have a fob. It doesn't matter. Put something else on your keychain, right? You know, so just to get again in that type of mindset of being prepared and nobody plans on anything happening to them, but just like when you were a boy scout or girl scout or what have you, that's the motto, be prepared, you know? Um, there's so many different scenarios that can happen. And if, and if you really, really think about it, you can actually, you know, hide under a rock for your life because that world is a scary place. Right. Um, I well, we don't want to do that. We want to live our life and love it. I met a woman once she was a realtor. And so, um, as a realtor, of course, you know, you put yourself in these threatening situations all the time where you're in a, a house full or a room full of strangers or one single male stranger in an area that you don't know what have you. So, you know, she and I were talking, she wanted to um, number one, join my team, but number two, host an empower hour. She had a friend who was so scared that literally every night, she would prop a chair up under her door, her doorknob, so that nobody could get in and stack pots and pans on this chair so that if anybody tried to get in, those would go flying. She'd wake up to grab her stick or whatever, her bat, and that person on the other side of the door would not try to get in her house. And I mean, that's just, it's insane to me. But you know what, that you, you, you hear about that or somebody who doesn't prepare themselves, you know, okay, I leave my doors unlocked. Nothing's going to happen to me. Anybody can just walk in and take anything. Right. I live in a safe neighborhood, ah. right? Exactly. You know, but, you know, or I go, I'm going on vacation and it's this nice resort town or, you know, I don't leave my resort. Shit happens there too. I go for a walk on the beach and boom, nobody sees you again. None of those people who've been taken, nobody plans on these things, right? So again, if you've gone for that walk by yourself and you have a pepper spray or whatever, and you're looking those people in the eye who you see on that beach, most likely they keep walking. They're looking for somebody who is going to be a target, who is a victim. And when you're prepared, that's like a shield. They're not going to see you. So it totally changes your mindset, your persona. Um, to have that awareness, number one, and then to be prepared with tools, with skills, you know, self-defense training, karate, kickboxing, any number of things, you know, you don't have to be fully equipped like a police officer. They got nice tool belts. They got everything, but you know what? Elbows, knees, palm strikes. These are all good things too, because again, if you drop those keys, now what do you got? I got a couple of wicked, awesome elbows, right? The strongest, the strongest part, the, the strongest thing that you can do. So, and I didn't know if I was going to mention this, but I will. Again, before we, we started the podcast, I mentioned at the age of, I think, eight or nine, I just remember it was the, the fourth or fifth grade and um, a boy was following me. Now I grew up in a tough neighborhood. I grew up in, in the streets. I say the streets of Boston and that's a fact. And he wouldn't leave me alone. And I kept telling him to leave me alone to the point where he had my left hand up behind me, right, in a, in a lock. And I will tell you a couple of times in my life when this has happened, I literally, I know what it means to, to see red because mm -hmm. I don't know where this came from, but I took a breath and with my entire body and all my strength at eight or nine years old, I made a fist and I swung my entire strength and caught him. I know in the face, he ended up with a, a ah. broken, yeah, a broken nose, but he went flying like the movies flying feet in the air, hands in the air and landed on his butt. And, and I looked at him and I said, I told you to leave me alone. And I was walking my bike home because I remember then grabbing my bike and, and, and walking home. So you just never know, mm -hmm. um, you know, Ladies, gentlemen, because this happens to men as well, for sure. When you say no, you mean no. That's it. No. 
And if the first no is not acknowledged or honored, then you need to get out. Like find your exit, have an exit plan, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. And, and so many people, again, don't plan for that. Don't think that I trust this person. They would never hurt me. But again, not to say that we should be, you know, on our defensive all the time and be looking for that. Right. But just to say, all right, in my head, again, I've trained myself in that split second where shit happens. I can run, I can do this. And, you know, it, it's creating that reactionary gap. That's what you did, Gail. You, you, you distance yourself with a punch from that person. So that's what you need to do. And that's what legs are good for too, because your legs are super powerful. We're women. We got that strength, man, right? <laughs> so you create the reactionary gap so that you can grab your tools. And again, stay the fuck away from me. I'm going to hurt you. Right. You know, right. and, it, and it's point. having that verbal Ex commands yeah it's having that expression so i wrote down a couple of times vulnerable vulnerable victim right um some of the conversations i've had with with folks lately have been about having that victim air about them yeah right and not even knowing that they did but because they so they were, were constantly preyed on and, and in situations i mean one was in a trafficking ring i mean she almost got sold man <laughs> the fact that she got out was pretty amazing right yeah. yeah um because she didn't have boundaries she didn't know better and she didn't know that she could defend herself yeah but she did know to, to run like heck and get out of dodge right um so these defenses, you mentioned, you know, teach your children. So what can we do as observers, shall we say, and we see that vulnerable person, especially a child, and we know that something is going on, but we can't put our finger on it, right? Yeah. It's not something that you would call the police on because you, know, you need proof, but trust our gut especially as women, right? What are some of the things that we can do or, or what can we say to, to those vulnerable younger people? Yeah, yeah. And you know what? It, it's most of what I do, you know, is, is targeted, shall we say, at, you know, adults or people who can carry my products. You know, some of these tools, it's illegal for, you know, children to carry, right? So again, we have to arm them with knowledge, with education. And again, it starts at home. Mm -hmm. So, you know, sometimes the, the threat is again, a, a parent or somebody that is a trusted person in that child's life. Right. And again, this is where it gets so conflicting because as an observer, you know, this child, something's going on. The child isn't acting right. They've said something that just makes you stop and think. So what we can do for a friend, a family member, no matter again, what age they are, is just ask questions first. And it doesn't, you know, I, I, I definitely would try to avoid, you know, being so incredibly direct, like, is he hurting you? Is he touching you inappropriately? You know, you can't just say that. Because, you know, that person who could potentially be the victim will automatically throw up those defenses. Because if this is a trusted person, again, they don't want to get that person in trouble. Right. So you're trying to gather more information and let that person know, hey, if you need to talk about something, you know, please trust me. I want to listen to you and I want to believe I will believe whatever it is that you tell me. You know, because some folks who are victimized, you know, they're just, they're gaslighted into having, you know, to, to believing that nobody's going to believe you if you tell them that I did X, Y, and Z. Don't or they think it's normal. Or they think it's normal. Exactly. Right. So if you have a person that, again, you've got a gut feeling about, they're being mistreated. Um, again, one of our Safe Hearts books, I was mentioning that is, is about 
um, you know, being a champion about um, fortitude and doing the right thing. And this is hard for anybody more so as a child to protect another child, you know, because you've got your own stuff going on, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you're a kid, right? So what do you know? But again, we wanna teach our kids to listen to their heart signal, their gut instinct. Is it butterflies in the stomach? And tell somebody else, you know, I think something's going on here. So as, as uh, you know, a child helping another child, again, you wanna try to get a trusted adult to help you with this. As an adult trying to help a younger person, let that child know that you are a trusted adult. You're going to believe them, you're going to listen to them, and you want to help them. That is where it all starts. You know, it, it may not be appropriate to say, here, take my pepper spray, or here's a whistle, or, you know, something like that, right? But again, that's the first step is to let them know that you are there to support them and help them because something is, is not right and you want to make sure that they are okay. I do remember um, when my son was very, very young, he had a friend that you could tell by his demeanor yeah. that he was a troubled child. Let's just put it that way. And again, short of accusations, which you don't want to go down that, that path. Mm -hmm. What we did do was, you know, have him over frequently and showed him what love and support in a family was all about so that he felt safe and wanted to come and spend some time with my son and with, with us. Um, unfortunately, we ended up moving out of the area. Oh, yeah, when he was like nine or 10. And I think that was really too bad. Really, really too bad. Because we did, we tried to stay in touch, but we, we couldn't stay connected with him. Oh. Um, and then there, you know, at the same time, I had a dog who he wouldn't let certain people, like he would get between me and the doorway, even people I knew. Ah. And if he got between me and the doorway, they stayed outside. Yeah, I, I, I didn't go, oh, no, he's okay. He won't hurt you. I'm like, okay, he knows something I don't. <laughs> well, that's true. I mean, I mentioned that earlier, you know, that's animal instincts, right? right? Listen to it. We're animals, but again, we have judgment. And sometimes it does not work in our favor. So the <laughs> dog knows exactly. The dog knows. Right. End of story. That's all I need, right? Right. It's okay. Good for you because it doesn't right. matter. The dog said not to let them in. So <laughs> done. Dog. Yeah, not not even I had a, a friend of mine and this dog by the way if you knew this dog is the friendliest dog I mean, it's like one big teddy bear Aww. right and um a, a, I was taking adult education classes and a woman who was working with me came over um we were going to work together and I went upstairs and the dog was fine went upstairs to get my my papers or whatever and I came down and the dog had her cornered <gasps> She couldn't move. And she looked at me. I went, well, this is new. <laughs> and, you know, I patted the dog, moved him away. And then her and I left and, you know, did what we needed to do. But it was okay for her to come in the house, but not to be alone. Wow. Yes. So strange. Yes. Sometimes I wish I could, you know, speak to animals and be like, what, what is going on? Tell me something because right, right. I don't understand canine. Right. But right, they, right. they do know. And I mean, animals are so much more intuitive, I think, than, than people. But again, it's just, it's instinct. You know, we right. lose that, you know, we're, we're domesticated so much, <laughs> um, you know, and we're babied, you know, all this technology, all these conveniences, you know, and the same thing with like a house pet versus a wild dog or a coyote or something. I mean, huge difference. They still have that instinct or a specific breed. Again, you know, they're very aggressive. Oh, right. but guess what? Yeah. And that's for a reason. But, you know, exactly as people. Yeah, it's way different. Right. Way different. And so if you have pets, pay attention to them and maybe feel what you're feeling when they're feeling that. Right. And, and listen to the justification that you're making because that's what happens. Well, you know, I'm with her in class all the time. I don't understand, right? Well, that's in class, right? That's not in your own home, right? And even, and I will say that 
in one particular case, you know, a neighbor came to the door and the dog was, did not want that neighbor in. And I was thankful because I had the same instinct, right? Thankful that I had the dog <laughs> between me and, and the doorway. So anyway, Samantha, if people wanted to get in touch with you for more information on defense or the tools that you have to offer specifically, how would they do that? Yes, well, um, I am online um, at, um, it's www. Um, mydamselpro.net slash Sam T. Um, all of my information is there. My phone number, I mean, I'll give that out. It's it's your podcast. I'm just very trustful. It's um, 603-391-6538 or email me. I'm also on Facebook, um, Samantha Theobald, Independent Damsel Pro. So um, all the resources are there. We have great videos that I share from my self-defense classes, from our, our damsel instructors. Um, these are all trusted resources. We've got some great training that we've done. And again, when I do an empower hour or a warrior workshop, whether it's for you as an individual or, you know, um, your workplace or your friends and family, you know, it's all about equipping, empowering, and educating. And, you know, whether it's a $10 pepper spray or an $80 stun gun, as long as I'm putting something in your hand, I'm doing my job and I feel so good about that, you know, and even if you don't purchase anything, but a year later, you call me to say, I'm ready. This is exactly what needs to happen. So I have your pepper spray. <laughs> exactly. You know what? And I'm ready to help you now. So I helped you then with a little seed and that's all it starts with because somebody who is in that situation is not necessarily going to tell me that. But when I talk to them about this scenario or that scenario or how you can be safe, it gets the wheels started again. You know, I don't know this, but, you know, I'm telling you that I'm trying to help empower you and it's got to get you thinking. So it's just amazing how things, again, things I don't know, but I can change a life just by having you at the Empower Hour. And that's and it. you don't know. I mean, you really, you really don't know. Something like 9-11, which you mentioned, is, is an obvious, oh my goodness, I could have been in that tower or in that airplane. But there were subtle things that you don't know why you chose to do something versus something else, which you normally wouldn't do. Mm -hmm. I don't know why you went down that path, but it's your path and it's fantastic. So thank you very much, Sam, for your time. Again, this is Gail Kraft from the Empowering Process Podcast. If this was awesome for you. Please like it. Please share it. If something came up for you because of this, please comment on it. Maybe we'll do another session or a different session based on what your question is and share it with a friend who you think might need to be a little empowered. Gail Craft, bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the Empowering Process Podcast. Be sure to visit Gail at gailcraft.com. To learn more about how she serves thought leaders, entrepreneurs, and goal seekers. And remember, if you like this broadcast, be sure to share and subscribe so you don't miss an episode.